Hi, my name is Sarah and I'm a psychologist from Superfriend. I'm here to give you a couple of tips and supports when it comes to um, having that check-in and wellbeing conversation. Um, how do we respond when someone says they're not doing okay? And what are some of the tips when they're not traveling so well? So how do we start that conversation? So first and foremost, it's really around um, taking the onus off of yourself to feel that you're um, the one stop shop for solving the problem. Um, we know that there's only so much that we can do and that um, is, is within the remit of our role. So removing that onus on ourselves to be the amateur psychologist per se. So it's really around uh, taking that onus off of yourself and going into the conversation uh, with that active listening. So making the time um, is the first thing I would suggest, is making that time to really sit with and be with the person to offer them that support. Secondly, um, making sure that you let them know that, that the conversation that you have is, is kept between the two of you, unless I guess there was any concerns for the individual in maintaining their safety. Secondly, it's really around opening up the dialogue. So, so listening and asking, you know, how are you? Tell me a little bit about what's going on. Now the person might say to you, look, I'm not okay. I'm having some, some real challenges at home, at work. So it's really about generating some, some conversation there. So you might ask a few open-ended questions such as, so tell me a little bit more about what's going on at home. Um, explain to me how that's impacting you at work. Now, I guess in the work environment, um, as a people leader, there's that responsibility to be able to provide those workplace supports. So for you as a people leader, it's really about teasing out what are the key work-related stressors and what are personal related stressors. So the difference might be workflow, workload, and managing some of the crisis-related calls, for example, in a call centre. Um, personal related concerns might be conflict with a partner, um, issues with the children um, at home, with homeschooling, or perhaps sleeping challenges. So those are all personal related concerns that with a little bit of support at work, with managing their role and their responsibility, might be alleviated, but they also might need a little bit more support with respect to having a chat to someone with um, you know, an EAP professional, or it might also be a friend or, or a colleague. Okay, so it's really about helping that person to feel heard. So that active listening piece, really listening to the key points about what's being said and repeating them back to the person. So paraphrasing what it is that you've heard and letting the person know that you have heard them and that you understand. Okay, so that's that, that really listening in and tuning into what's being said and removing that ownership on yourself to be that solution for the person. So when it comes to the work-related concerns, it's really teasing out if it is a work-related, so if it is, for example, high job demand and limited job control, what are some of the things that you can do to implement and buffer those supports? So it might be around offering um, you know, more flexibility to be able to perform their role within uh, you know, a longer time frame. So it might be you, know, you can start anywhere between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. and perform your role within those hours, offering more autonomy, um, helping them to clarify their job role and, and what, what's expected of them um, and really upping that support at the moment. So upping the communication and, and really having those, those regular touch base and checkpoints around how that's going for them. So um, I guess that sums it up. It's really about um, listening, making time to listen, being there for the person, removing the onus off of yourself to solve the personal related concerns where it is available to put into place some work-related um, controls to be able to mitigate some of those pressures and stresses at work, and then helping that person and guiding and encouraging that person to get social support, professional support, so really advocating for EAP, or it also might be helping them to articulate or, or think about what are some of the self-care things that I can do and integrate and implement into my life. Okay, so that's just a little snippet of, of what are some of the things that you can do and how can you reach out and have that conversation. I hope that's been somewhat helpful for you today. All the best with your journey. I do hope that you're all working safely from home and that we all get back to business as usual as soon as possible. Thanks so much.